Good morning, St. Timothy. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And when the psalmist says that, amen, let's clap our hands for God on this morning. Amen. When the psalmist says us, he suggests that there is unity in the house of God. And when there's unity in God's house, it gives us the opportunity to be connected and praise God with a unified voice. And if you're grateful for God's grace, his blessings, his love on this morning, clap your hands in the sanctuary again for his grace. Amen. The word of God says from James chapter 1, verse 17, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. And God wants us to trust us, trust him and his wonderful blessings. Let us pray. Our God and Father, we love you on today. We thank you for your continual mercies and grace that you shine upon us. Lord, this morning we ask for forgiveness of our sins. We ask that you come into this holy sanctuary and saturate our hearts as we worship you on this morning. Shift the atmosphere, rest, rule, and abide in this place. Open up the floodgates of heaven and bless on today, Lord God. We sing praises to your name. We bow down before you and we come before you with expectancy in our hearts to be with us. And in Jesus' name that we do pray, amen. song is called You Are My Strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. And it reaches to me.
are my strength. Come on, choir. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reach to me. Amen. He is our strength, but he is also our grace. We're thankful for his grace every day. Yeah. Every morning, a new mercy.
on, keep giving God a hand clap of praise for his mercy. Amen. Amen. There's five things I just think about on what, how God has just kept me over this week. The first thing I thought about was because of his mercy. The second thing I thought about was because of his mercy. The third thing I thought about was because of his mercy. Have I got away? The fourth thing I thought about was because of his mercy. And the last thing I thought about because of his mercy that David said, endure us with us all the days of our lives. Amen. And on this morning, we're going to give God uh, the praise as we go to him in the throne of grace this morning. Amen. There may be someone that is standing in the need of prayer. We just want to pray uh, together and in unity as we go to God. Let us pray. Precious Lord, this morning again we do bless you. We do thank you on this morning. Lord, this morning I give you the praise because when my eyes opened this morning, I didn't take for granted that you gave another chance at this journey called life. And you have made so many ways for us, opened so many doors, calls, turnarounds in our lives. And for that, we say thank you. Gratitude and honor is due to you, O oh God. Your word says, in your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed. And you redeemed us by sending Jesus, our comforter and keeper, as a guide and sacrifice so that we may have a right to the tree of life. God, life's problems try to weigh us down. And Satan is busy trying to sway us away from you. But I ask that you come into our lives like a rushing flood and abide in us. Give us the faith, O oh God, when we are afraid. Give us the faith when we are lonely and lost. Give us the faith when we are misunderstood and bless us, O oh God. I pray for our church. I pray for our pastor. I pray for every member this morning, God. Bless us this morning, God, as we have come into your sanctuary, God, with expectancy in our hearts, God, for you to turn things around in our lives. God, I pray for our church as we fast, God. God, we have completed one week and we are looking forward in your guidance to endure and being strong spiritually and being strong in our faith. God, I pray for this city. I pray for the covering of your blood over this city and over this nation. I pray right now for the lost, for the homeless, the mentally unstable, those who are wondering what they must do to be saved. I ask for your peace that surpasses all understanding. Because your word says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of God 
will raise up a standard against it. And we ask that you rise up and deflect every fiery dart or every trick that Satan plots against us. But we know that you can do all things but fail. And sometimes, God, we have tears filled in our eyes. But I ask that you rock us in the cradle of your arms, wrap us in your love, and bundle us in your grace. God, we love you. We love you and we love you. And when we don't know where to go, we love you. When it seems unsteady, God, we love you. When we are confused, God, we love you. When we, God, we just want to say we trust you on this morning. Because you are a God who never fails. Because you're a God that has a record so long that as we look over and over and over, we see that you have completed every task in our lives. Every time we called on you, when it seems as if you were in reclined, God, you inclined into our hearts. And for that, we do say thank you. Hear our prayer, oh God. God, we come to you, God. We just ask to be heard, God, and for you to shift some things in our lives. And some things we're asking you to do a shondo in, to turn it, turn it around, God. And for that, we do say thank you. And all these things that we do ask in your darling son Jesus' name that we do pray, amen. Greetings, St. Timothy Church family. Giving honor to God, to Pastor Jackson and Pastor Karen. Please listen to the following church announcements. Join us during our weekly prayer line on Wednesdays at 12 noon by dialing our prayer line number at 712-432-8399 and enter code 795209. James 516, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Prayers go out to those members who have been sick. Let us keep all those listed on our prayer and sick and shut-in list in our daily prayers. Special prayers for Brother Marvin Sessa III, Rusty, Jesse Evans, Juanita Jackson, Diane and Billy Pratt, Judderson Blair, Candy Yanders, Cora Hoskins, and Phyllis Drayton to be added to the sick and shut-in list, and for pastor to know who is sick and shut-in, please contact the church office. Thank you for your continued giving to our church and ministry. Please continue to give through our website by clicking the Donate button, or you can download and use the Zelle app. You will need our church email address, which is Timothy at hotmail.com. Continue to mail or drop off your contributions in the mail slot. Lawrence and Vera Kelly would like to thank the St. Timothy family for the outpouring of love, calls, prayers, and support in the loss of their aunt. God loves you, and so do we. Ms. Almeida Green would like to make the following announcement. All 2021 graduating seniors, please sign up at the church office counter today. If not attending church today, please call the church office during the week to be added to the list. Office hours are 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The Food Pantry Ministry will hold a meeting today after service at 2 p.m. via the prayer line. The number is 712-432-8399. Passcode is 795209. Living After Loss session with Pastor Jackson will be this Thursday, March 4th from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Coronavirus vaccines are now available for seniors 65 and older, first responders and healthcare workers. For assistance, dial 219-318-0675 or call 211. For registration, you can go to the website at vaccine.coronavirus.in.gov. Save the date. Our youth pastor, Reverend William Curran, will be installed as youth pastor of St. Timothy Community Church on Sunday, April 11, 2021 at 3 p.m. Let us support this historical moment of our church in person and or virtual. 
Let us come prepared that afternoon to sow a love gift offering for Pastor Karen. And that concludes the announcements for the morning. At this time, we would like to recognize our visitors. We are pleased that you chose St. Timothy as your place of worship today. It is our sincere hope that you would come and visit with us again. I did not receive any visitors' cards. If there are any visitors, will you please stand and be recognized at this time? Can you give us your name and where are you from? Welcome. And now, Pastor Jackson. Well, so we know that this is the day the Lord has made, and we've come to rejoice and to be glad uh, in it. Uh, it's good to see so many of you uh, in person this morning. Um, and. Uh, and we're glad that God has allowed us to come together one more time uh, in the sanctuary. And we also greet those that are uh, viewing our broadcast, um, certainly over our internet, and those that are listening over uh, the telephone um, conference call line as well. And those that are on our Facebook pages, we ask at this time if you would just uh, share uh, your Facebook page with others that may um, uh, may not be able to get to church this morning, but they can certainly tune in uh, to the service this morning and worship with us this morning in spirit and in truth. So we invite you now, if you would just uh, share uh, your video uh, of your Facebook page with your friends and invite them in. We want to encourage um, all of our uh, members, certainly, and co the community at large to, uh, to get vaccinated. And we know that there are many that are afraid of it, but we want to encourage it uh, so that um, we all can remain, uh, continue to remain safe uh, in this pandemic. I know the numbers have dropped uh, as far as uh, being able to be vaccinated. So I think it's now at age 60 or above, uh, you can be uh, vaccinated. So please, uh, you can uh, call the church office if you are a senior that don't, you do not have the capability of internet and going online. Um, if you call the church office Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, and Thursday between the hours of 9 and 1, uh, the secretaries can be able to assist you in getting you registered uh, for uh, the vaccine. Our church through this whole pandemic has, uh, we have been continuing the best we can to meet the needs of our community, and we have been uh, doing uh, food drives, and we've been going throughout the city and feeding the homeless and those uh, that are on the street. And so we're having another opportunity um, that we can uh, do just that for the commission that the Lord has given unto us is also uh, to feed those uh, who uh, certainly are in need. And so we have a mobile market uh, by the food bank on Wednesday, March 10th, and that'll be from the hours of one and three here in our parking lot. And so uh, we encourage uh, you to spread the word about that. Uh, again, that the mobile market by, um, is done by the Food Bank uh, of Northwest Indiana on Wednesday, March 10th, from the hours of 1 and 3. And if you desire to volunteer and help with that, contact the church office with your name and number so that we can add you to the list of those that will be helping with that effort. Through the season of Lent, we are doing a church-wide uh, fast. Uh, and so uh, a couple of things very quickly. Um, if you missed the teaching on fasting and praying, uh, you can go to the website of the church and the video is there um, on that Linton, um, on the Ash Wednesday service uh, at six o'clock. Uh, Pastor Curran and I uh, covered both fasting and praying. And so we're doing a, uh, what is called the Paul, the Apostle Paul fast. Uh, which is in the book of Acts, chapter 9. And if you're familiar with that passage of Scripture where Saul begins to walk down, uh, going on his journey to Damascus to, uh, to uh, kill the Jews and kill the Christians in Damascus, but then uh, the Lord stops him on the way and he blinds him. And the Bible says three days. Uh, three days he went without food and went without water. And after the three days, uh, Ananias came and 
uh, he touched his eyes and through uh, the Holy Spirit, um, his eyes, he was able to see again and the scales fell from his eyes. And so the point of the fast is a three week, three day, three hours. We're in our second week. And so three days during the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and three hours on those days from the hours of 11 to two, uh, we fast as a church. And, uh, and when you fast, uh, we're fasting uh, for a breakthrough, all right? And so whatever you need God to do for you, whatever breakthrough you need in your life, it could be health-wise, it can be uh, the Satan, Satan's on your trail, uh, whatever it is, you got financial issues and whatever it is that's going on in your life, you need a breakthrough, you can certainly pray and fast with us for three weeks, three days, three hours. This week, we want to welcome um, two new members to our church, and we want to welcome um, Brother Tommy Walker and Sister uh, Juanita Walker uh, as they join St. Timothy Community Church. And Dr. Chantel Walker is pointing them out there in the back, back there sitting on my, my left, your right in the back. And so we welcome you, um, Brother and Sister Walker, to our church, amen. amen. Just before I close, um, let me uh, do two more things and then we'll move forward in our worship experience this morning. Number one, uh, I was in the mall with my son uh, the other day and, uh, and we ran across, uh, we we're trying to find him a, um, a tie uh, to wear with his suit this morning. Um, and so we did this, you know, we're doing the Afrocentric um, this morning clothing. And, uh, and so I ran across a new uh, black business, uh, and I promised her that I would, um, I would mention her business uh, to you as we talk about Black History Month. Uh, I think we also ought to uh, keep in mind of the black businesses that are around us, and we ought to support those businesses. If we don't support each other, who, who will? Amen, somebody. And so uh, I want to make mention of her. Um, her, she does, her, uh, her, her business is G, GG Accessories, and she does African clothing. She does purses and jewelry uh, and all kind of accessories. And you can find her at River Oaks Mall uh, store um, B19 in River Oaks. And that's in Calumet City. You know that mall is there. Uh, so she's been there for two months now, and, uh, and she has some wonderful stuff in there, particularly ladies. I think you would enjoy a lot of her jewelry and pocketbooks and stuff. And so um, just make sure you don't use the Lord's money. Amen. <laughs> make sure you use your, you use your tithe, don't use your tithes and your offerings. Amen. I'm just messing with you. But we want to, uh, we want to support her. Um, she's a, uh, seems like she's a senior lady, and, uh, and she has, looks like she has passion. I felt her passion uh, for her clothing and for her items, and, um, and so we want to support her. She also does military and Masonic gift items as well. If you have any family members who are in the military, you can also purchase things to send them uh, while, they're, uh, while they are away. And so you can also um, look at those items as well. And so please support her as, um, we, as we highlight uh, Black History Month, and I wanted to highlight uh, certainly her, uh, her business. Um, let me also, those that were not here last Sunday, uh, my son Andre has been with us, and he was supposed to leave on Thursday, but his scrimmage was canceled uh, back in Georgia, so he wanted to stay until Sunday, and so we are glad to have him again. So if he would just stand so you all can just, he's in the back by the sound. The, uh, so you all show him some love uh, before uh, you leave today and wave to him. Um, I, I received a note here, um, and uh, Mr. Drayton, uh, Mr. Drayton's son uh, is having emergency surgery today. Now, which son is this? I know you have several of them. <laughs> which son? Robert. Okay, that's uh, okay. So he's the junior. Robert. Okay. Oh yeah, we call that's Shay. That we call him Shay. All right, we want to pause right now. Let's pray for him as he's having surgery um, this, uh, today. Uh, Eternal God, we thank you, O oh Lord, for who you are in our lives. 
And God, we never know why things happen, but God, we know that you have all control over everything. And so we pause right now as we lift up Brother Robert right now that you would touch him, O oh Lord, as he's in the hospital, as surgery is about to begin. God, we ask that you would guide the doctors, O oh Lord, and that they uh, may be guided by you. O oh Lord, we, ask, we pray for healing right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we believe in medicine, but God, most of all, we believe in you. And so, God, we ask that you would do the miracle that you know how to do. We ask, God, that you would surround his bed right now uh, with your presence, O oh Lord. And God, know, let him feel not only your presence, but feel the prayers of the saints as we've come together right now at this moment to lift him up in prayer. And God, we declare and decree right now healing over his body. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And then after the surgery, God, we pray for recovery. We pray that you would give a speedy recovery, O oh Lord, to touch the doctors and nurses that will take care of him as he recovers from his surgery. And we declare and decree healing. In Jesus' name we pray, and the people of God say together, amen. 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 We give opportunity now for those that have not done so, particularly those that may on, be, be online, to give uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the conference line. You can go to the uh, Facebook page or our web page, rather. And you can go to the, uh, if you're on our webpage, you can go to the donate button. And you can certainly click on our donate button uh, to be able to give any of your tithes or offerings. And you may do so um, at this time. We encourage you, if the worship experience and the ministry has been a blessing to you, um, we need your support uh, as we continue to do the work of that the Lord has called us uh, to do. Uh, let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gifts. We thank you for the offering that has been given from your people. And God, we ask that you will give us a continuous spirit of a cheerful spirit of joy and giving unto you that as we give to you, Lord, that those offerings go to be a blessing not only to the house of God, but to the ministry and, and our objectives, O oh Lord, in, that in which we go out to do. God, we ask that you will bless the giver and give back to the giver that you've given unto them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Pastor Curran's going to come at this time. Our youth pastor hasn't he been doing a wonderful job. Let's get. I mean, he just came on in and just just um, with full force and um, and doing a wonderful job in our church and, and connecting with our youth. And I think he's doing a great job. And so we're going to ask him to come at this time to um, give an introduction to our Black History moment. This is our last Sunday of Black History. Uh, and then after he's finished, uh, our music ministry is going to come and uh, give us a selection, and then we'll hear the word from the Lord. Hey Amen. Before I uh, present uh, who will be doing our Black History presentation today, uh, I want to say on yesterday we had a great time on Zoom with the youth on our It's All Fun and Games Zoom interaction. And so parents, thank you again for allowing your child to participate in that on yesterday. We had a ton of fun. We had fun in videos we watched. We had games. We had trivia through um, the resource Kahoot. And they won gift cards. I had gift cards for those that participated and won the games that we played. And so they got one gift cards to Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, and Dairy Queen. So I know I wish I could have won some of those treats as well. <laughs> But uh, we had a blast on yesterday and looking forward to more activities with the youth after service. I do have those gift cards here for those participants um, who won. And so you can meet me uh, swiftly after church and receive them. Also, one more announcement. Boy Scouts will be meeting this Thursday. They are meeting again in person, but will be socially distanced um, every first Thursday of the month. They will be meeting. So uh, if you have any more questions, you can ask Sister Kalana Mack in the back on, the, on that matter. Amen. So today is the last Sunday of Black History Month, and our youth have been doing a great job with the presentations, haven't they? <laughs> Amen. Now today we have a special presentation that is a blast from the, pa from the past with a trip to the present. And Kendall Jackson, our very own Kendall Jackson, will be presenting today on who we are highlighting. So let's clap our hands as she comes this morning.
Good morning. My name is Kendall Jackson, and I'll be doing the Black History presentation this morning. In order to understand our present, we must observe our past. And being the last Sunday of Black History Month, we want to have a blast from the past and a boost into the present. Today, we recognize two historical black figures, Miss Annie Lee Cooper and Miss Stacey Abrams. Both have different stories and narratives, but the two correlate in the advancing of rights for African Americans. There is a video presentation that is being displayed. After the videos, I can further navigate you on these two empowering women. Though Ms. Annie Cooper grew up in a system that honored skin color above character, her parents worked hard to provide for her and her 10 siblings. As a wife and mother, Ms. Cooper had already experienced a full life before she put a face on police brutality in Selma. She had already traveled and worked in various capacities. When she heard about the nonviolent effort to Though Ms. Annie Cooper grew up in a system that honored skin color above character, her parents worked hard to provide for her and her 10 siblings. As a wife and mother, Ms. Cooper had already experienced a full life before she put a face on police brutality in Selma. She had already traveled and worked in various capacities. When she heard about the nonviolent effort to gain voting rights, Ms. Cooper set her course towards justice. She attended mass meetings and she stood in voter registration lines. For that, she lost her job. For that, her family's lives were threatened. And for that, she was beaten. On January 25th, 1965, four Selma police officers, including Sheriff Jim Clark, beat 53-year-old Annie, who was unarmed after she punched the sheriff. One blow to her head was so severe that it later caused a tumor in her throat. After that beating, Ms. Cooper went to the jail where she was left untreated. When she finally reached the hospital, the only care she received was a bandage to cover the gash. Cooper had registered to vote when she lived in Kentucky and Ohio, and she told her friends and neighbors that she intended to vote in Selma as well. But when she tried to register, the registrar told her she failed the test. She tried often. Once I stood in line from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m., but never got to register. Ms. Cooper had already begun working with the Dallas County Voters League, organized years earlier by Amelia Boyton and her husband. And she joined the fledging SNCC effort as well. In early 1965, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and SCLC arrived in Selma to stage a nationally geared campaign for voting rights and began demonstrations. On January 25, 1965, she had been standing in lines for hours at the county courthouse waiting to make another attempt at registering to vote. The police arrived to break up the activists, including the notorious local sheriff, Jim Clark. As she stood waiting, Cooper uttered, nobody's afraid of them. Clark poked Cooper in the neck with his billy club, and she spun around, giving him a hard right hook, knocking Clark to the ground. The sheriff's deputies attacked her, arrested her, and charged her with criminal provo pro provocation. SCLC's James Bevel, who was staying at the Torch Motel, reflected on the situation. We're going to be working mostly with voter registration here, and not everybody is nonviolent. Not everyone who registers, registers is nonviolent. Not everybody who registers is supposed to be nonviolent. I was trying to be nonviolent, Ms. Cooper told a Jet Magazine reporter a few weeks after the incident. But I just can't say I wouldn't do the same thing all over again if they treat me, treat me brutish like they, like they did this time. Stacey Abrams is a political leader. 
voting, voting rights activist and New York Times bestselling author. After serving for 11 years in the Georgia House of Representatives, seven as Democratic leader in 2018, Abrams became the Democratic nominee for governor of Georgia, winning at the time more voters than any other Democrat in the state's history. Abrams was the first black woman to become the gubernational nominee for a major party in the United States, and she was the first black woman and the first Georgian to deliver a response to the State of the Union. After witnessing the gross mismanagement of the 2018 election by the Secretary of State's office, Abrams launched Fair Fight to ensure every American has a voice in our election system through programs such as Fair Fight 2020, an initiative to fund and train voter protection teams in 20 battleground states. Over the course of her career, Abrams has found multiple organizations devoted to voting rights, training and hiring young people of color, and tackling social issues at both the state and national levels. In 2019, she launched Fair Count to ensure accuracy in the 2020 census and greater participation in civic engagement and the Southern Economic Advancement Project a public policy initiative to broaden economic power and build equity in the South. She is also a huge reason that Georgia turned into a democratic state, thus giving President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris a big lead in the 2020 election, which resulted in the two winning. Our history matters and we must stand true to it and constantly remind ourselves of our culture, our background and our morals. Thank you, happy Black History Month.
Tell me. Oh. 
Sometimes you have to just allow the Holy Spirit to move amongst his people. Because in that moment, as we shared, the move of Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit was reminding us that God knows our name. When others forget about you, when you seem to be tucked to the side and behind the scenes, nobody even calls your name. You ought to be reminded this morning that he knows your name. And if he knows your name, that means he knows everything that's associated with you. As we move, thank you, choir, for ministering to us this morning. Our lesson this week is coming out of the Gospel of John. This is our last week in this Gospel. And then we'll be moving into the book of Romans. But the Gospel of John, chapter 11, and verses 33 to 44. But I'm going to just read from 38 to 44 in order to center us in the word of God this morning. In keeping with the spirit of love month and, um, and as we have been sharing this month, not only black history, but also Valentine's Day and, and just loving on one another, uh, there is a, um, a story that's told called Valentine's Day Dream. And before we go into the word of God, let me share this story or joke with you. It says, after she woke up, a woman told her husband, I was just dreaming that you gave me a pearl necklace for Valentine's Day. What do you think that means? And the husband replied to his wife, you'll know tonight. And that evening, the man came home with a small package and gave it to his wife. She was so delighted, and she opened it up to find a book entitled, The Meaning of Dreams. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, as we transition into your word this morning, we thank you for the worship experience as we've come together as one body, as believers in Christ. And God, we come with many different things from, for many different people, but mainly we come this morning as this being a healing station, the house of God, house of prayer, and whatever we stand in need of, God, we know it's through your presence and your word that we are saved and we are delivered and we are set free. And so, God, let the word of God, the word that comes from you, touch the hearts and minds of your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, scripture from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verse 38. It says, Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. 
And it was a grave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, who was Lazarus, by this time is a bad odor. He has been here for four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that I, if you believe, you would see the glory of God? And so they took away the stone, and then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. Verse 43, and when he had said this, Jesus called in, called with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with stripes of linen and a cloth around his face. And Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Verse 41, so they took away the stone and then Jesus looked up. Jesus looked up. I want to talk for a few moments. Hold your head up. As we continue to celebrate and embrace our black history during this month of Black History Month, I reflect over the last 200 years and looking at how far we have come as an African American people living in an unjust society in which every day we are still fighting for social justice, which is the defense of human dignity by assuring the essential human needs are met and the essential human rights are protected for all people. It's in Brian Singer's Town's book entitled, Living in Christ, Catholic Social Teachings, Christian Life in Society. In his book, in, in one of the sections, he talks about creating a just society. He offers the idea in creating a just society by persons engaging in the political process to ensure that government promotes a climate in which individuals can both safeguard his or, own, his or her own rights and duties. We exchange, or we change rather, the climate of injustice by making sure that we, as the black race, is sitting at the table to make sure and to protect human rights for all people. If any changes are going to be made or the continued safeguard of our human rights, we must continue to have people who look like us, who also represent our needs, and who will protect the human rights in all three branches of government, administrative and legislative and judicial. We have made progress because of persons like uh, Joseph uh, Rainey, who was the first African-American representative to be seated in the U.S. House. He served South Carolina's first con congressional district beginning in 1870 during the Reconstruction era and following the American Civil War. Now, in 2021, 151 years later, we have Dr. Vernon G. Smith, you know who he is, who is a Democratic member of the Indiana House of Representatives, representing the 14th District since 1990, who also chaired the Indiana Black Legislative Caucus from 2006 to 2008. He and others have been a constant voice, a consistent voice, for the African American people and all those who believe in protecting the human dignity and the human rights of all people. Unfortunately, if you've heard the news and you've heard and saw and read the uh, Facebook pages and emails that have been going around that Dr. Vernon Smith had to speak up 
and he spoke up for the injustice being made or was about to be made. Dr. Vernon Smith was the voice that spoke up in the news conference stating that he was called a bully by Representative Alan Morrison after speaking against a House Bill 1367, calling it the bill racist on the House floor. He was booed and shouted down by fellow Republicans who there warned the bill, that he warned the bill was discriminatory. Not only did the Republicans booed and shouted at him, some Republicans even got up and walked out during the floor debate. Which is, I mind, remind you, is against the conduct and the policies of the House rules. Dr. Smith said at the news conference, according to the news reporting of any star, and I quote, that he was in the restroom washing his hands after a continuous debate with Morrison, the assistant majority floor leader, and then started calling Smith a bully for his floor speech. They were the only two in the restroom at the time. And Smith said he felt that Morrison was, was edging him and on to get physical and calling him a coward. And by Smith said he ignored him and went out the hallway without drying his hands. He further stated that Morrison followed him and continued to come at him until another colleague pulled Morrison aside. Mr. Smith quoted, I just don't believe or just don't feel that I should be in a situation where I've got to fear physically for my safety. And then he also noted it was unclear which lawmakers were actually carrying a firearms. The point is we must keep being the voice for justice within our society if things are going to get better and we must support those who continue to be a voice and to encourage them to hold their head up while even injustice is all around them. It's in this narrative, my brothers and sisters, this morning in our text, the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 32 and 44, where Mary has now reached a place where Jesus is telling him, Jesus is telling, she is telling Jesus rather, that her, her brother Lazarus was sick, and then her brother Lazarus died. It is at this moment Jesus moves from speaking from the divine nature, as he did in the beginning of the gospel, to now speaking from his human nature. We find that Jesus, he weeps or he mourns with Mary and Martha and the Jews that had been mourning by the bedside. But then Jesus tells them to take him to Lazarus' grave. And he tells them to move the stone from the cave. And Jesus then looks up, tilts his head up, if you will, to his father. And then he talks and have a conversation with God. Then he calls Lazarus out of the grave. It is here where I pause in this pericope of the text to discover that Jesus is in his own time. Jesus is, uh, is concerned about the well-being of not only Mary and, and, and Martha, but he's also concerned about Lazarus. Jesus, in this time of circumstance, looked up to God, his father. In other words, he held his head up. And I would submit to us that no matter what our struggles or circumstances are, that we face in life, we too, like Jesus, must continue to hold our heads up. I leave us with three things this morning before we leave the sanctuary. Is number one, hold your head up in the pain. It's in verses 32 and 36, where we find that Jesus has approached and is now with Mary and with Martha. And as he has instructed them to, to bring him to Lazarus and where he finds Lazarus, he was mourning. We find Jesus crying. We find him weeping. And I would submit to us there's nowhere else in the Bible 
where we find Jesus weeping, where we find Jesus crying. Even on the cross where he dies for our sins, where he's lifted up and he's nailed to the cross, we don't find any indication that Jesus cried or he wept. But rather in this text where Lazarus has died, he shows an emotion of grief and he grieves and he mourns with Mary and Martha. But as he's mourning with them, something transpires in the conversation with, with the sisters. Is when he gets to the grave, uh, the, 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 the whining or the crying and the weeping, if you will, uh, it stops. And we find Jesus lifting up his head to his father, talking and having a conversation with God. What I'm making a point to us this morning is that Jesus felt their pain, but yet he still went uh, to his father with the pain and, and he was able to talk to God about it. Can I pause here and share with us this morning is that when you are suffering with pain, when you are suffering with the burdens of life, you got to do like Jesus did. He paused and he looked up to Jesus, looked up to his father rather, and he began to pray and talk to his father. Jesus knows our pain and he wants to heal and he wants to mend and he wants to fix our pain in life. But we must keep our head up. We must demonstrate what Jesus demonstrated by looking up to God. If your pain this morning, whatever it is that you're going through this morning, all you need to do is look to God and hold your head up. It may be hard, it may be difficult at times, but I come to tell you, saints of God, believers, if you just hold your head up, God will make a way for us. The second thing I leave with us this morning is not only do you hold your head up in pain, but secondly, hold your head up and obey God. It's in verses 38 and verse 40. Where we find Jesus, uh, uh, we find this miracle that is happening uh, amongst the people. We find that Jesus is uh, giving them instruction and telling them to move the stone away. As we discussed in Bible study this morning, Sunday school this morning, that Jesus could have rolled the stone away by himself. He didn't need Mary Martha. He didn't need the Jews uh, to help roll the stone away. He is an almighty God. He he has the power to do just that, but yet he wanted them to participate in the miracle. And I come to tell you when you participate in obeying God's word, that God will help you in the miracle. In other words, that it took their obedience to God in order for the miracle to happen. I come to tell us this morning, if you ever want a miracle, you just obey God. If you ever want God to change some things around in your life, just obey his word. Word. If you ever want God to raise you up out of some stuff in your life, all you have to do is open the word of God and ask God for instruction, ask God for direction, ask God for guidance. If you ever want God uh, to turn your situation around, call on him in not only the morning, but the noonday and the midnight hour, and he will respond. Oh, if you ever want God to do a miracle, you have to obey what he says. Why is it that we don't want to obey God's word? but yet we expect God to do a whole lot of stuff for us. He's not that type of God. He's a God that wants his people, the believer, to believe in his word and to follow what he says. It has nothing to do what God is not able to do. God can do everything. He can do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ask or think. All I'm suggesting to us this morning is that we must obey God. If God told you to get up in the morning and to go to church, you ought to get up in the morning and go to church. Uh, uh, if God told you to give up your tithes and your offering unto the house of God, you ought to release the funds of God so God can get the glory out of it. Uh, sometimes we look at our situations and our predicaments and we hold back from God. But is there any believers in here and viewing this morning that said it's not about what I have, but it's about what who is in me. And because God is in me, I'm going to do what God says. You may not understand it. You may not agree with it. You may not want to follow it, but if God said it, I am going to believe it. Is there, are there any believers here this morning and viewing that can declare and decree that if God said it, I, I'm going to move forward with it. If God declared it, then it shall be. If God
God put it in my mind and in my heart and in my spirit. I'm going to follow it because when God does it, it's going to come out like pure gold. Is there anybody here that can testify I made it thus far because I've been believing the word of God? Could anybody testify this morning that I'm here today because I believe in the word of God and the word of God got me to where I am right now? Is there anybody that can lift their hands and believe God and testify that if it had not been for the mercy and grace of God, I would not be here this morning. It's because of God that I got food on the table. It's because of God that he clothed me in my right mind. It's because of God that I've got opportunities that are opened up for me. It's because of God he's made my enemies my footstool. It's because of God that it is what it is. It is what it is because of God. Oh, come on, put those hands together and thank the Lord. tells them, roll back the stone. And then when he told them to roll back the stone, they were setting themselves up for the miracle. When you obey God, you are setting yourself up for the miracle. Uh, lastly, I'll leave with you. Hold your head up. And trust God. It's in verses 41 and 44. It says, he looked up. It says he took away, they took away the stone. Jesus didn't do it. They did it. It was a, here it is, it was a group effort. He didn't say Martha did it by herself. Didn't even say Mary did it by herself. Didn't even say one of the Jews did it by themselves. It was a group, a corporate movement. Think about when the church comes together and obeys God. I'm not just talking about St. Timothy, but think about the universal church. When we come together and we obey God's word, obey God. They took the stone away. Then the Bible says, verse 41, then Jesus looked up. And this is the focus of our attention of the text, is that Mary didn't look up. Martha didn't look up. The Jews didn't look up. But if anybody is going to be in the crowd that's going to look up, Jesus set the tone. He set the example. And the Bible says, he looked up. And if you are a follower of Christ, a disciple of Christ, you will do what Jesus does. He looked up, then you ought to look up. Can I help us this morning? If you have a spirit of always looking down and complaining and, 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 and grumbling about what life has presented you, I come to tell you, look up. Jesus looked up, but look what he did when he looked up. It's in verse 41. He said, Father, I thank you. I can stop right there and shout. He, he looked up to God, his father, and he called his daddy. He said, Father, I, I thank you. And I just pause to tell us every now and again, we've got to pause in life, and we got to call on our Father God, and we got to thank God. Well, look what he's thanking him for. He said, I thank you that you have heard me. <laughs> Not only have you heard me, he goes on and says, and I knew that you will always hear me. He says, I'm thanking you for hearing me. And I'm thanking you because I knew. Some of y'all missing it. I, I, I knew that you heard me. And, and he goes on in the text and he says, and he said, for me, uh, uh, and, and he said, I said this for the benefit of the people surrounding me that were standing around me that they may believe that you sent me. He says, Father, I just want to thank you. Uh, Father, I just, I just want to thank you for putting me in a position to recognize who you are and what you're able to do around people who doubt you. He, 
he says to them, he, he, he looks up and he thanks God. And after he thanks him, watch this. The miracle happens after he thanks God. Okay, let me bring you, let me bring you. Come, come. In other words, he didn't wait for the miracle to happen first. Then he thanked God after the miracle. But according to the Gospel of John, according to the text, uh, that he thanked God before the miracle happened. Okay, let me help you. Whatever you're waiting on God to do, don't wait to thank him after he does it. You ought to thank him before it even happens. Or do I have about 50 of us here this morning and about 1,000 of you that are viewing online. Uh, if you need God to work something out in your life, oh, just thank him right now. Thank him in advance before it happens. Uh, you need some money? Thank him right now. You need a healing? Thank him right now. You need deliverance? Thank him right now. You need God to rescue you? You thank him right now. You need God to pull you up out of some ruts in your life, you ought to thank him right now. Is there anybody in here this morning that can testify? I don't have to wait till it happens. I'm going to believe and thank God for it right now until God does it. And if he doesn't do it right now, I'm going to know he's going to do it tomorrow. If he don't do it tomorrow, I'm going to still thank him until he works it out. Is there anybody here this morning that can praise God this morning because you have a spirit of thanksgiving? That's why David said, I will bless the Lord at all times and it's praise shall continually be in my mouth. That's why David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. That's why David said, I enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise because there's something about thanking God before it happens. There's something about believing God for it before it happens. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. There was the power of the tongue and I'm done. He says, in verse 43, when he had said this, Jesus called with a loud voice. Now, let me help us, those of us Christians that uh, don't believe in loud voices. Uh, sometimes you got to open your mouth and let God, let the voice uh, that's within you rise up. You know, a closed mouth don't get fed. When's the last time you sat down at the table and closed your mouth and tried to eat something? Every now and again, you got to open your mouth. And as Jesus did, and he spoke with a loud voice. And the Bible says he spoke not to Mary or Martha or the Jews, but who did he speak to? He spoke to Lazarus. And he told Lazarus, he said, Lazarus, come out. Now, now, now he, he didn't mess with this thing. He, did, he didn't say, Lazarus, come out. That didn't move nothing. When I spoke just that didn't move you. Lazarus, come out. But, 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 but when he said, Lazarus, come out. There's something in the sound of the voice that's not only the voice that's coming, but the voice that's coming out of God, coming out of Jesus. In other words, what I'm saying to you is, is when you allow God to move and when you open your mouth and when uh, you speak, uh, uh, whatever you speaking on, uh, uh, it will come to fruition. He said, Lazarus, come out. And the Bible says, he came out the cave, he came out the grave. When he came out, he still had his grave clothes on. What do you do when the very thing that you're, you're trying to resurrect, you're trying to put life back into, comes alive, but it still looks dead? Look what Jesus does. He spoke again. He says, Take off the grave clothes. Take off his grave clothes and let him go. Let him be free. Let him live. If we ever going to hold our heads up, we can't focus on the very things that make us look like we're dead. 
and the very things that may appear as if we are dead, use your mouth. Speak over your life. And don't just stop there, but, but speak over your neighbor's life. Speak over your children's life. Grandchildren. Speak over the things that seem like the devil has had hold on and say, no more. You know, we, we, we always say, devil, you a liar. Don't, don't use it as a cliche. If you're going to say it, say it. If he's a liar, tell him he's a liar. If the truth ain't in him, tell him the truth ain't in him. Jesus speaks. Proverbs 18 and 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Now we get excited and we shout on the death and life are in the power of the tongue. But we forget the second part of that passage of scripture. It says, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Now, those in Bible study this morning got the preview of this, but for everyone else, that we have the power within us to speak death. And we have the power within us to speak life. And the question I raise to us, which voice or tongue, rather, are you using? Are you speaking death? Or are you speaking life? Are you speaking growth? Or are you speaking hindrance? Negative? Or are you speaking positive? And here's what the proverb, the book of wisdom, leaves us. That they that love it, if you love speaking death, Proverb is saying, the fruit of death is what you're going to feed off of. If you love speaking life, the fruit of life is what you're going to feed off of. So if all you see is deadness, emptiness, you got to think about what you're speaking if you want to change the environment in, your, in which you're in, start speaking life in it. And when you speak life in it, the fruit of life will be around you. So you can eat from the fruit of life. And then when folks look at you and they're trying to figure out, why are you so happy? Don't you see what's going on? You can say, I've been speaking life. All I see is life. How do you see life in, in a world that's turned upside down and, and chaos is happening in government and all around us? It's because I'm speaking life into it and not death. Someone say, speak life. Well, let me close with... I was saying, Pastor, you took a long time this morning. I'm trying to wait for that chicken to get ready. <laughs> if Dr. Vernon Smith was present with us this morning, I would tell him, keep being the voice for the people. If he was here with us this morning, I would encourage him to hold his head up, keep looking to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. I would encourage him to keep on looking up to the hills from which cometh his help, knowing that our help comes from the Lord. Well, as we leave this sanctuary this morning, this house of prayer, what is the take-home message this morning for the rest of us that we can hold on the rest of this day, the rest of this week, the months and years that lie ahead. And the take home message is keep your head up. Through this pandemic, keep your head up. 
Through sickness and pain, keep your head up. Through worrying and doubt, my brothers and sisters, keep your head up. Through anxieties and loss of a job, keep your head up. Through divorce and racism, keep your head up. Through injustices that, that try to tear us down as a people, keep your head up. Through the name calling and the fear, keep your head up. And if you keep your head up, come to tell you God is going to be on your side. Ah, we're, we're, we're three types of people who are traveling through this journey called life. There are those of us that are about to enter a storm and, and those of us that are about to enter some issues that we have to address in life. And I come to tell you, if you're about to have uh, uh, your, your life is about to be turned upside down or you're about to face some obstacles, I come to tell you, keep your head up. And if you are a believer that's in the midst of something right now and you don't know how to shake it and you're trying to shake it off, but every time you shake it off, it still keeps on popping up and appearing. Can I encourage you this morning to keep your head up? Hey, you may be the uh, believer this morning that said, Pastor, I've been uh, out of it, I've been in it, and now I'm coming through something right now. I'm on my way out of it. Can I tell you, when you come out of it, don't be embarrassed that you've been through it because many of us this morning have gone through some trials and tribulations Many of us this morning have been through some ups and downs. Many of us this morning have had some hard ways to go. Many of us this morning have dealt with some things that were hard and things that were pressing upon our lives. But I come to tell you, don't be embarrassed of what you've been through, but you ought to shout and thank God he brought you out. Is there anybody here this morning that can testify this morning and said, I've been through the storm and the rain, but it was God that brought me out. I've been through trial and tribulation but it was God that brought me out. I've been through ups and downs, but it was God that brought me out. Is there anybody here this morning that can testify I've been through the wilderness, but it was God that brought me out. And when he brought me out, I made sure I kept my head up. Is there anybody here this morning that can decree this morning that I don't care what it is I'm going through, I'm keeping my head up. As a matter of fact, I I came in this morning uh, with my head a little bit down. Uh, I came in this morning uh, a little bit depressed. Uh, I came in this morning uh, with a little bit dis with anger. But I come to tell you, I heard the word of God. Uh, and the word of God uh, has taught me this morning uh, to keep my head up. Uh, is there anybody here this morning uh, that can testify? Uh, I'm not going to let my circumstance uh, pull me down. Uh, I'm not going to let my obstacles uh, pull me down. Uh, I'm not going to let my sickness uh, pull me down. Uh, I'm not going to let my enemies uh, pull me down. Uh, I'm not going to let adversity uh, pull me down, but I'm going to keep my head up. Uh, and as long as I keep my head up, uh, the Lord will take care of me. Uh, oh, come on in here, somebody. Uh, you ought to thank God this morning. Uh, he's been keeping you. Uh, he's been sustaining you. Uh, he's been walking with you. Uh, he's been talking with you. Uh, he's been guiding you. Uh, he's been helping you. Uh, when nobody else can help you. You turn to Jesus, and when you turn to him, he made a way for you. Is there anybody here this morning, oh, don't fool me this morning, that can say, I believe God, and because I believe God, I'm going to keep my head up. I'm going to keep my head up through trial. I'm going to keep my head up through tribulation. I'm going to keep my head up if you like me. I'm going to keep my head up if you don't like me. I'm going to keep my head up up, uh, if you call my name, uh, I'm going to keep my head up. Uh, if you don't call my name, uh, I'm going to keep my head up because of who uh, is on my side. Don't you know the Lord uh, is on your side? And if the Lord is on your side, uh, nobody else uh, can pull you down if you let them pull you down. Uh, nobody else uh, can destroy you if you let them destroy you. Nobody else uh, can treat you good uh, if you let them treat you wrong. Uh, let the Lord hold you. Let the Lord keep you. Let the Lord sustain you. Let the Lord guide you. Let the Lord build you up. Let the Lord hold your head out. Let the Lord hold your head up. So be encouraged, my brother. 
be encouraged, my sister, that this weight race that we're running is not given to the swift, but it's given to those that love the Lord and that will endure to the end. Oh, so if they ask you, what did you learn in church this morning? What you going to tell them? If you go home and you see somebody that's discouraged, you got a word from them this morning. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm laying hands on you virtually. But tell somebody, hold their head up. Stop acting like you're depressed. Hold your head up. Stop acting like you don't have nothing going for you. You still in the land of the living. Hold your head up. And sometimes a damaging thing is our children see us as adults with our heads down. As if we have no hope. But we can be the demonstration of hope by holding our heads up. Let us stand all over the sanctuary. There may be someone here this morning that has heard the word of the Lord and want to accept the Lord as Lord and Savior of your life. We invite you to come. What do I do? Just come to the altar and we'll meet you at the altar and we'll pray the prayer of salvation for you. If that's you, my brother, my sister, we ask you, we invite you to come. Would you come? Maybe there's someone viewing on our broadcast, listening on the conference call. You haven't accepted the Lord as Savior your, of your life. Would you do it today? I'll trust in the Lord. 2nd call is I'm already saved and don't have a church home and I want this church to be the place where I come and learn the word of God and fellowship and worship would you come I'll trust I'll trust Before we leave, let me pray the prayer of salvation, and then I want to end our prayer as we close. We want to again welcome Brother Tommy and Brother Juanita Walker uh, to our church. Uh, since they're in person, um, Brother Greg Jones as the president of the board, and I'll come down. We'll come back and we'll just kind of, you know, give them a little fist bump and just to welcome them. Um, those in their birthday group, I don't know, what is their birthday group? November and January. So if you are in November and January, if you want to just come by, go by and just wave your hand. We'll stay our six feet distance, but just wave your hand so they feel the welcome from the church, okay? Uh, we're going to do that, and then after that, then uh, Pastor Curran will come and, and give us our, our benediction and prayer over our food. Uh, L and L has prepared our um, uh, food to go, and so we want to make sure we're social distancing ourselves as we leave the sanctuary, and you can pick up your meal to go um, and enjoy your meal. Uh, I worked hard last night trying to prepare it for you. <laughs> let us let us pray a prayer of salvation for those that may be viewing that have not accepted Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, we pray right now that those that are listening and viewing that have not accepted you, that they will repeat this prayer. Father, forgive me. I repent of my sins. I turn from you. Deliver me. Set me free in the mighty name of Jesus, that I may come to you, O Lord, and serve you. Saturate, saturate me with your Holy Spirit, that I may follow and guide Holy Spirit. And then help me to find a church particularly if they desire St. Timothy, we welcome them. And so, God, we thank and we praise you and we glorify you right now for the believer that has now recommitted themselves to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brother Jones and I are going to go and just greet 
our new members, and then Pastor Curran's gonna come and give the benediction. Amen. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you again for resting, ruling, and abiding in this place, allowing your spirit to manifest in us. God, we thank you for the word that was given to us to keep our heads up, God. And God, always to look to you because you are our help and our strength, God. So go with us through this week and our fast, Lord. We ask that you go with us. And as we go to our various destinations, we ask for traveling grace for your blood over us as our protection god and then we thank you for the food that was prepared for nourishment of our bodies all these things we do ask in your darling son jesus name that we do pray amen 